Hi everybody, welcome to Wool and Wine episode 35. This is part two of what we knit in 2023. I'm Tammy. I'm Claudia. I'm Janet. And welcome back to all of our viewers. And if you're new, we're super happy to have you. And today is the 22nd of January and we are recording in Bellbrook, Ohio, which is a south suburb of Dayton, Ohio. It is. And oh, if... yeah. <laughs> so, before we get started, we'd like to toast all of you. Yes. So, cheers. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So, if it looks like we're wearing the same clothes <laughs> as we were last time, that's because we are. <laughs> this is part two yeah. Yeah. of our sweaters that we made in 2023. And we're filming on the same day as before. Correct. <laughs> so. Right. Yes. so, yeah. Okay. So. We're not going to talk about what we're wearing. If you missed part one, you can go back and take a look at that because we did talk about what we're wearing in detail. Mm -hmm. But um, for this episode, we're going to talk about the things that we knit from the second part of the year because <laughs> it was a little overwhelming for you to watch it all at once. <laughs> yes, and I only have five things left to talk about. Okay, so. I have 12 and you have... I have eight things. <laughs> so we, we've got a lot to share with you today. Yeah, so we might as well get going, huh? Yes, go ahead. All right, so the f next one I'm going to talk about is the Joni by Natasha Hornby. Tasha Hornby, I guess. And uh, I made this in the size 45. And I used a Queensland Savannah uh, colorway number 24. I couldn't find the actual name of it, but. Oh my gosh, I just love that. Oh it God. is a beautiful, beautiful sweater. I, I love it. I think I would make another one out of some different yarn. I don't know, for some reason this yarn, it has a nice drape to it, but it's not super soft. It's kind of rough, I think. See what I, oh, I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, is it 100% cotton? No, it's got cotton and linen, I'm and linen. Sure. Maybe the linen is giving it that little bit Let's get of... a rough, it has a little roughness to yeah. it. Yeah. But um, it just I love the looks. collar. I just mm -hmm. love, I do love, too. love the color yeah. and the all the lace in the front. Uh, it was a fun, very fun knit. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what else to say yeah. about it. It was a great, it's a great sweater. I would highly recommend the pattern. Um, She's a really good pattern. So which, what yarn did you use? I them? used the Queensland. Um, she said. She did say yeah. that. I did. Savannah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a Savannah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I don't know if I sh how well I showed this in the when I was wearing it, but I'll go ahead and give you a little view of that front panel. So... That's just gorgeous. It is. It, it's gorgeous. I would highly recommend this pattern because it's just... It just is easy. It's it's beautiful. I do wear a little cami underneath it because of all the whole all the yarn over. So, um, yeah. Let's see. I think that's it. Nice. Unless you guys have unless you have any questions or anything. I don't think so. Because I, mean, I didn't know modifications. So good. Yeah. Yeah, and she did do the. It does the back is a little bit longer than the front. It well, it has a. On both around it, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, lovely. Thank you. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. I've seen it all colors, and it just looks great on everybody. Yeah. So, okay. Hi. Okay. Well, my first sweater is the Tolsta Tea by Rebecca Clo.
and I got the inspiration from Tammy who put those beautiful stripes in so I, I did that same stripe option and I used this yarn that I got in Spain which was the Drops Bell and the colorway was Alt Rosa and the natural was was the like the cream collar and love this yarn I highly recommend the yarn and you know it's very affordable and very nice and cool when you wear it um, I made the medium size and I just I'm very happy with it I just love it so mine came out a little bit of the square neckline too and I really like how mm -hmm. yeah. how that um, looks and I'm very happy with the sizing and the length and all the things so okay so you used 4.06 skeins was the 06 this little bit of the white or maybe you didn't use all four skeins of the pink because remember when you were buying it you bought I remember I used pretty much everything that I had and I know that was 40 or 50 gram skeins so mm -hmm. you know then that's really only 200 grams of the yarns I used I think pretty much all of it right um, and then I had one skein of the natural and I don't think I used all of that though no so talk so, about your you did these pearl ridges in the middle of your stripe mm -hmm. do you remember to make them stand right. out right so so that it wouldn't um, be kind of a jagged edge I knit the first row and then I purled a couple rows and then I knit again and it really came out beautifully. Yeah. Is, did you do yours that way as well? I didn't. Mine is just, I didn't do the pearl ridges. I just did, I, mine is all knit. I, oh, well, I don't know why I did that. Oh, but you did with the exception texture. of I, just adding some texture. I thought it looked, uh, would look good doing yeah. it that way. And it does. Um, and that's why, yeah, I it does. Knit, <laughs> that's why I knit the first row instead of purling. Um, so I wouldn't get it. it the so dashes. it wouldn't make a dash mm -hmm. um, on the pearl rose, but yeah, it does. It it created some texture. In fact, I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see if you can even see. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of texture there. Yeah, it looks beautiful. So uh huh. I have some of that so, drops yeah. bell. I love that stuff. Yeah, I highly recommend. This first time I used it, and I really <laughs> like it. And so that's about it. Well, love it. Was that your first Tolsta tea? I don't even remember. Yes. Okay. This is the first and only one I've made so far. So this spring, you can count on me making another one. It just fits so nice. Mm -hmm. And it's such a it, it beautifully does. written pattern. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show two at a time because I did two Tolsta teas. <laughs> and so it's Tolsta tea number two and Tolsta tea number three. So the first one, and those are also by Rebecca Klo. I think that in the video, I wore one and then I held the other two up. And I think that I wore the one that I showed in part one of this. So this is the textured Tolsta tee. And I did a broken rib. So I knit purled on one row and then I knit two rows in between and then did knit purl. And it created this really cool texture. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really great so idea. I started that after the short rows. So 
if you can see in the back, there is just knitting at the top back where I did the short rows. But this yarn was something that I picked up when we were in Spain or Portugal. I cannot remember exactly. Um, this is the Rosarios 4 Eau de Mira in the colorway 05. And I would just call that a peachy pink. And it's, it's just, so pretty. Uh -huh. It's a really, really yeah. beautiful color. And then the next one, I also got this yarn. It is the Tolsta Tea as well. This is 100% cotton, and this is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm lying. This is bamboo. This is Hobie Rainbow Bamboo. No. No. The collar and cuffs are Hobie Rainbow Bamboo. The body is all done in Cadia Pasio. Paiso, P-A-I-S-O, however you pronounce that. And I think that's 100% cotton. So it is a color changing, it's self striping yarn. And I came back from the trip and threw this in the washer and it shrunk. So I think I'm going to soak it, roll it in a towel, step on it and lay it out and see what I can get out of it. Otherwise, I'm going to give this to a much smaller person because <laughs> I have no interest in dieting. Um, and those are all, I've done the size four in all of my Tolsta tees. So, okay, your turn again. And I have a Tolsta tea. <laughs> All right. I think it was catching. It was. <laughs> well, it's such a cute pattern. It is. I it's a know. great pattern. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so this was the Tulsa Tea by Rebecca Clo. And I use, let's see the uh, Rowan Creative Linen in two colorways, natural and pumpkin. And I made it stripes, just like, well, it's one of hers, one of her versions that she showed. And yeah. um, mine came out to be a square neck and I think I did use a smaller needle hmm. on the, the neck, but, um, yeah, like they said, I don't think I can say much more. It's a great pattern. It's um, fun to knit and it goes really fast. This is yeah. the one I think that went. So I started July 4th and ended July 16th. So that wow. was pretty wow. fast. Wow. That was really fast. <laughs> and I would like to make this pattern, just make it a long sleeve. Mm -hmm. Because well, it's it fits so nice. Yeah, it does mm -hmm. fit. It fits really nice. Mm -hmm. And so I think that would be a good option so and I think let's see what is this I think I did like six rows of the natural and two rows of the pumpkin yeah that is really nice yeah I really love it um I can't say anything bad about it <laughs> it's a winner 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 hey right excellent. so that pattern's very versatile while well, they show you little examples of different ways, uh -huh. different things that you can do with stripes or non-stripes and textures and so on and so forth. But the other thing was she also had, she had like the DK version and a fingering, fingering version. version. Right. So yeah. you could make it either way. Right. Which right. was really neat. And I think when she came out with that fingering version of it, she just added that. She made that a enhancement to the pattern that she'd oh. already released so you didn't have to buy it again to get the right. fingering yeah, version. That was really nice. nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah. yeah, so she's real good at that. I, you know, we talked about the corn cardigan on the last episode where she had the short sleeve, the long sleeve, the round neck, the v-neck all in one pattern. Mm -hmm. And I just saw she's doing a vest and a long sleeved sweater that are all, you can either make it round necked, v necked, long sleeved, sleeveless. You know, it, it's right. just, it's and she's doing that all. Oh my gosh. It. It's yeah. just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I missed applying for the test knit on that by like a hot minute. And it, yeah. I really wish I got in on that because I love her patterns. Okay, anyway, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
My next <clears throat> finish is the Alberta Sunshine by Sandra Buzza. Here it is. That's pretty. This is similar as the Rialto Ripples, but a little bit different as far as just the lace, but it still has the three stripes <coughs> and it is, it is similar. This is a free pattern, so you don't have to purchase this one. And I used some gorgeous yarn from Expression Fiber Arts. So I had um, the um, Superwash Merino Sock in the Laguna colorway, which is the body. And then I had the pearlescent, silk pearlescent fingering in the Amazonite, which is so the lace. Mm -hmm. She makes such and beautiful yarn, dyes such beautiful yarn. Yeah. So um, this says I made this also in a small size, but um, it looks like it's like a 40, 41 size. Yeah. So beautiful. very happy with it. Yeah, I, pretty. I wore it quite a bit so far. <laughs> yeah. I don't so. think, does the pattern page show two different colors or did you do this to make the lace stand out? You're right. I, I did it to make the lace stand out versus it was only one color on the pattern page. But That's hey, what I was thinking. I, I mean, I really like that. Yeah. Especially because Rialto Ripples, yeah. I did it that way too. <laughs> and I think Rialto Ripples is, it's a multiple color. So I wanted to do the same on this one. That's just beautiful. Uh huh. So really happy. Great so job. there's the Alberta Sunshine and then there's the Alberta Summer, both <laughs> by Sandra Buzza, and they're both free patterns. And, and they're so, both cute. Yeah. Yeah, they're both cute. So this is so I didn't make this one, the Sunshine. So of course I had to make that last year. So yeah, we made the Alberta Summer couple of years ago mm-hmm yeah maybe three years ago so that's a it's a similar also <laughs> yeah. the lace is just different yeah very cute so thank you alrighty so my next one is the sunshine road by drops design I really like that one. And mm -hmm. yeah, so this is a free pattern. All drops design patterns are free. I had knit a different top in this yarn. So this is the Cloudborn Fibers Pima Cotton in the Caribbean colorway. And I knit a, oh, Friday tee, the one with the, the stripes that radiate out. It's the summer version. I can't remember. It might be a Monday tea. It's one of the um, petite knit patterns. And I had yarn left over and I thought, you know what? I need to figure out what I can knit with that amount of yarn because I was really trying to use it all up. <laughs> and this one out. But it's got a super cute cable down the front. And it, it's really an easy pattern to make. The finishing on the sleeves you do at the time that you're knitting, so there's you don't go back and pick anything up, like on the sleeve edges. Huh. Yeah, that's really cute. Pretty. It is cute. Nice. It's she just they they did a nice job. I don't know, you know, they're very controversial because they do a lot of pattern knockoffs and their patterns are always free. But I don't know of any designer pattern that looks anything like this. Mm -hmm. I love the cable in the front. Yeah, it's just really cute. It's yeah. easy to do. And I like the, I like kind of the ribbing on the front, on the body. Yeah. That's, that is really nice, really nice design. So cotton is a little unforgiving when you knit with it. The stitches don't slide into their place and stay there. Um, you know, it's just not as even as knitting with wool, huh. you know, because mm -hmm. there's not as much to to hide the... Do you think you could make that into a long sleeve sweater? 
Um, you would have to pick up, you know, you'd almost have to do a sudden sleeve mm -hmm. because it comes in so mm -hmm. far. So maybe short rows, similar to mm -hmm. another one that I did. I think you could probably pick up all the way around, do short rows until you've got a cap that you could just knit straight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you probably could. We can talk about it. I bet you, I bet we can figure it out. I bet we can. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, because I really love the pattern. Yeah, itself and. Yeah, that would just be a knit stitch instead of a. That's a garter stitch. Mm -hmm. So you knit every other. Or mm -hmm. you knit every row going back mm -hmm. and forth. Mm -hmm. and But I would knit a row and purl it to make it easier to pick up mm -hmm. for the sleeve. But it's beautiful the way they did the shaping and everything. It, is. it, it, it is. would make Very a nice, nice. one. Um, you could do this in wool and make it a vest. That's what I was just yeah, going to say. Could, so that yeah. would make a really cute vest. It would. Yeah. So why don't you do one more? Okay. My next one is the Corin Cardigan by Rebecca Clo. Beautiful blue sweater. Yeah. I love it. So um, I made this in the 40.75 size and I used the Knit Picks Gloss DK in Colorway River Rock. And I really like the sweater and just the pattern is really beautiful. It makes a beautiful sweater. Mm -hmm. I don't like the when it's buttoned on me because I think if I would have made this the next size up, I would have been happier with it as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. It's just it just hugs me my waist <laughs> a little more than I wanted to <laughs> when I button it. So I do like to have it unbuttoned for that reason. <laughs> But, it, you know, it is a really pretty sweater, and I like it. And I really like the yarn. It's very soft. Uh -huh. And you did and the rounded neck. Correct. Yeah, I did the rounded neck on this. Very nice. And, uh, yeah, so really pretty. And when we saw Rebecca at Pick Up Every Stitch, oh, yeah. we were all three wearing ours. So Claudia had hers on from part one. I had mine on from part one, and Janet had that one on. And, yes. And Melissa was with us, and she had hers on, on as well. So all four of us were wearing that gorgeous Yeah, pattern. Yeah, and Rebecca was so excited. Yeah. Yeah. She was. Yeah, that was cute. I don't think designers expect to walk in someplace and see a whole flock of people <laughs> wearing, their, <laughs> wearing design. their design. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. So, okay. So my next one is also the Corin Cardigan by Rebecca Klo. I did the 44, so, but it doesn't look that much bigger. It's, it's shorter for sure. Mm -hmm. And I did the round neck on this one. So it is a little more oversized than yours, I think, because I can button this one and it doesn't, I don't think it looks bad. <laughs> Maybe everybody right. else thinks no. it looks bad, and I just it's don't. Very cute. Don't tell me. If you think it looks bad, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. So this is Knit Picks Capra DK in the blush colorway, and I love this yarn. Mm. This is so soft. It I think very... Capra, does Capra have a smidge of cashmere, cashmere, cashmere in it, yeah. and it feels like Beautiful. it. It's just so nice. And it's wearing really well. I found, so in part one, I talked about the um, satin v-neck camisole that I found on Amazon. I found a pink one, peachy pink one to wear underneath of this. And I wore that, we had a after holiday party a couple of weeks ago. And I wore it with mm. a pair of bright red pants. Oh, wow. I bet that so was pink pretty. and bright red. Yeah. So it's pilling just a little bit. But it's you probably because of the cashmere. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of hugs that night. <laughs> 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 so, you know, you got to hug all your friends when they come. And you hug them when they leave. And 
That's awesome. That's oh, yeah. Wow. So I think it, it's holding up really well. I, it might could use a little bit of a deep pilling, but mostly I think it's just fluffy. Mm -hmm. And I love the pattern. So this was the mm -hmm. second time I knit it, and I may or may not be done. But this <laughs> yarn holds, I think it holds its shape way better than my superwash did on the other. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. I, I feel like it um, looks a little better on. Maybe you should go again. I probably someone, should, yeah. yeah. Go for it. So the next one on my list is the Gold Abydos by Lily Kate France. I made the size three, and this is a very heavy sweater, like heavy weight-wise, like it just, it's DK. I used Roving Acres Kids Silk Select in the Butterscotch colorway, and that's for the lace, the mohair lace bit up at the top. And I shouldn't really call it lace, it's just a very open knit stitch. Um, just a bigger gauge needle. And then the body of the sweater is Madeline Tosh High Twist DK in the Chamomile colorway. I love the sweater design. I do not love this sweater on me. I think that maybe it's not my color. I mean, although I don't think it, it kind of cute. looks like it might be my color. It might just be... I made the sleeves like really voluminous <laughs> and that might not, when you're big busted, you don't need big sleeves too. I um, think it just makes things seem over, over, uh, like overdone. too much is too oh, much, you know, gotcha. enough is enough and too much is not good. And I think that makes it just not good. So I, I don't know if I do hate the color I'm looking and I'm not sure. I need a color analysis. I want to make sure that I want to wear all the things oh, that I'm knitting. Well, sure, yeah. So if any of you out there do color analysis and you're anywhere nearby, <laughs> <laughs> we're in. Hook up I a think girl. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I have a good idea, but hook us up. Yeah. I surprisingly i feel like we are the same season almost yeah yeah i feel I like know. we are and yeah. it's weird but see, i think i could wear that color maybe. yeah i mean i when i hold it up and look in the viewfinder it doesn't look awful <laughs> i don't know i'd have to look in a mirror with natural light because obviously in here we don't have natural light yeah. <laughs> especially today <laughs> no, no it's very gloomy out um okay so okay so I also, at the same time, made the Abado sweater <laughs> by Lily Kate France. And really love the yarn on this. This was the Mirasol, um, the llama, llama una, <laughs> and oh my gosh, is it ever soft? And the colorway was cat mint on this, and it's just this gorgeous heathered purple. And then I used the drops mohair kid silk and the colorway dark purple. Beautiful, beautiful, it is gorgeous. love yes. the colors. Um, when I did the sleeves on this, I did do um, the decreases down the arm so it wouldn't be quite so voluminous as Tammy <laughs> said, <laughs> suggested. And I decided to make a just a ribbing um, cuff and I used a small needle, so I made it just a you know, a thin, a, a cute little. So it was a rapid decrease here. And then I had a couple inches in my cuff so that it wasn't, it just, there wasn't a big balloon right at, at the, um, at your cuff, at my, wrist. yeah, wrist. So, um, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. And overall, I'm really happy. I like the length and, um, the yarns and 
all the things. And I think it's just a little more of a dressier sweater. Oh, yes. it is. Yeah. So, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, it's not something that I just wear every day. So, but I really like it. It's beautiful. I'm really happy with it. Yep. Well, if we're on that subject, can we do this one? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> do it. Yeah. Guess what I'm going to show you? I am the Abydos <laughs> also. And... We all did these so when we went to Rhinebeck, we'd have we we wore them on the day when Lily Kate France was there, and so she got to see see us with all her her design, yeah. and she was excited. But anyway, I made the size four, and you do the measurement across here, not oh, your upper bust. bust. Yeah. yeah, you don't do your bust size. So anyway, I did the size four, and I used the Hobie alpaca silk. In the colorway Marrakesh is the main and then I use the um, Hobie soft alpaca lace in the colorway dark amber and I hold held those two together for for all the knit all the um, uh, body and and then I used the lace for the the Marrakesh. The, yeah. No, this was this was the lace the dark and amber. dark amber. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I love it. It's so amazing. I but I did I did um the voluminous sleeves. Yeah. I actually no, I did do some decreases on the bottom on the sleeves. I wow. think it starts about here. They're so huge. But they are huge. <laughs> and then I did it the way she she recommended for the um rapid decrease and then you do the same thing as you did for the, welt. the welts yeah mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of a welt it doesn't have any give to it so <laughs> anyway but yeah i love 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 this sweater that i love the color yeah and yeah it was it was fun to see lily kate and how she reacted when she saw uh -huh. us yeah she squealed she did so we had watched anastasia from free your sheep and she said that she was meeting Lily Kate and they were going together. So we were looking for them and I forget, did you say I there's... saw Anastasia. I was like, oh, there's, there's Anastasia. And, and I'm you like, were like, oh, there's Lily Kate. I'm like, Lily Kate's <laughs> got to be right with her. Yeah, yeah. And she, they heard us say their names and saw uh, us in those yes. sweaters and just was like, yee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so fun. That was, that was fun. really fun. Yeah. But. Okay. Well, my next one is. You should do two or three. I, I'll do. A, I'll do a couple. Um, the I call it the green. It's the roll over the top by Hinterm Stein. And I didn't do a video, but I've got a flat lay that I am showing. So I did this in a size three and not last year, not in 2023, but the year before, I did one of these in a lino, I think, in a gray, a pale gray color. And I love it so much that I decided that I needed one in this bright green. So the, the yarn I used here is Knit Pal Cotton to the Core in peacock blue and I I don't see anything blue in it it's very very green it's kind of got like a heathery green and white and it is a cotton core like a um, blown yarn but the core is white and then the cotton the green cotton is blown into it and it's this is just such a cool pattern I just love this again in wool, mm -hmm. this would be an amazing vest. Mm, yeah, don't you think? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love good. vests. I mean, I I just have so many blouses that having a vest to wear over top of them makes them way more wearable in this kind of weather. But I love this also as a summertime top, and I can't say enough about this pattern. It is top down, and it is really good. 
the detail in it is wonderful. Again, I think that it is an applied I-cord. No, not an applied. It is an I-cord where you slip the last couple or some stitches around on this edge so you don't have to go back and do any finishing. And then I think I did pick up, I had to, if I had to have picked up around the neck and I don't know. I'm not even, sh I can't remember. Yeah, but I would think yeah, you could wear that in the spring. Yeah. With a could. blouse too, with that. Oh I mean, yeah, with it yeah. being cotton. With yeah, it you being could do it with short sleeves. Yeah. Right. This would be cute over a t-shirt, but in right. the summertime it is just amazing. And even though it's a DK weight, this one I just wore in Jamaica and it was about, it was between 82 and 85 degrees every day. And I wore this to dinner a couple of different nights. So absolutely Beautiful. love that. All right. Then the next one on my list, because I've still got a good stack here and we want to kind of get through some of these, um, is the Salar by Hohi Locatelli. And I knit the size three. This one is, at first I didn't think I liked it. I'm not sure why I didn't like it. <laughs> it's, it reads a little bit gray and a little bit purple. I love it. So the yarns I that too. I used are the <laughs> Galler Farms Prime Alpaca held together. So that's in silver gray. And I held that together with Fiberneth Dye Works and this is her floof so the mohair is what gives it this color and that colorway is the witching hour and i'll tell you what i love lisa jarn that girl mm. and the witching hour i mean hello i had to buy the yarn just based on the name but it gives it this gorgeous color and i don't know if it's coming across as beautiful as it is i hope it's as purple because it's just got such a purple this okay so i'm not even talking about the pattern and i should <laughs> uh, so i have worn this a lot it is the perfect if i'm not doing anything active if i'm just like knitting or cooking or hanging out in the house or you know, I can't vacuum and do things like that in it because it is, you know, mohair and alpaca and I'd be sweating my arse off, <laughs> right? But um, if I'm just hanging out or if you go to dinner, it's the perfect weight. And I am totally in love with this now. And I don't know what it was initially. What, remember I said when I first made it, I'm like, eh, yeah, it's okay. I've, I have... Uh, decided to love it <laughs> so I do I have nothing bad to say about the pattern it was an easy knit um, and I recommend using a this is worsted weight right it's a worsted weight pattern yes so I use sport and lace to get worsted and my gauge is spot on so I did do I don't know if I said that the size three and I imagine that's a 40-ish, maybe 42, because it seems like it's got uh, plenty of ease. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now you go. <laughs> okay, my next sweater is the Summer Noose by Elizabeth Judith. I love and the color. Dang. Claudia was the inspiration on this. She made this first, and hers was so gorgeous that I had to make it. I bought that pattern a long time and ago. I still haven't made I know. it. Yet. You were the reason um, I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I used the Hobie Rainbow Rainbow Bamboo in the colorway copper. 
And so gorgeous. This yeah. is another one I love. It has a beautiful drape to it, and it just everything about it. And this was the size medium. And I'm very happy with it. And I recommend it. And I, I see no pills on this. No. Nothing. It looks like it's brand new. I do remember, though, uh, several of my sweaters, it was became fall. So I quickly... <laughs> <laughs> so I probably didn't wear it as much as I'm planning on wearing it come in the future here. But, um, yeah. Very happy with the yarn and the pattern. Oh, right. It was right. so much fun. Kept, oh, kept, yeah. Kept me engaged and everything. So, mm -hmm. excuse me. Yeah, that's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. How much time do we have on the timer? We want to make sure we don't go over. I have plenty. Okay. Um, I will do one more then. Uh -huh. So I have the Tutka Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. I love, love, love this pattern. <laughs> I am not kidding you. When I saw it, I thought, oh, that's cute. And then I knit it and I'm like, okay, I am totally in love. There's something about this color. It's so not flesh tone. At first I was afraid it was a little too like flesh tone, huh. but it's just, I can't decide. It's like I a feel, beigey peach. Or I feel something. like it's a cool color, though. I don't feel like it's a warm. It almost has a gray undertone to it. But this is so stinking cute. Um, I did the size two, and I used Knitology Glowing Worsted in the Shoreline colorway. And this is another one of those Knit Crate yarns that I have had forever. And so they send you two skeins, or back, back when they were still in business, they sent two skeins. But you, at the end of that month, you always had an option to go in and buy more of that, of what they had left over. And I knew that I wanted to do something big with that. And I've got enough of this left over to do a whole nother sweater. Uh. But look how stinking cute this thing is. I do have to wear something under it because of all those yarn overs. I mean, it's a worsted weight. And if you're wearing a worsted weight sweater that is holy, <laughs> holy, it doesn't really make sense, right? So it definitely requires at least a tank top underneath. But I love it. It was very engaging and it was a fast knit. I bet I did this in two weeks. I bet you did. Wow. Maybe even under two weeks. And there is a video out there tutorial about how to knit bobbles without turning your work. It's uh -huh. you're just you're purling backwards rather than turning for every bobble and man that just it's a life changer. Uh -huh. It is absolutely game changer. Yeah, with all those bobbles. I yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be challenging. But I love it and that yarn is holding up well, not that you can get it anymore, but um darn it. It's really good stuff. At least I don't think Knitology is out there anyplace else. I think that was a Knit Crate yarn brand, but I could be totally wrong. If you know, <laughs> let us know because I'd like to get some more of that. Yeah. So do you want to go? Me? Yeah. Sure. So this is one of my last ones from the from last year, the Robinia by Ann Wenzel. And I did the col the size, it was 120 centimeters, which I think is what, about 46 inches, something like that. I don't remember, I did figure it out at one point, but I'll tell you what, I absolutely adore this sweater. It is, mm -hmm. and the yarn that I used is the, um, uh, let's see, Cascade. Ario Tweed is the navy blue in the colorway navy. And then I use the um, Isiger 
And I held that with, let's see. Oh, Pearl this is it. This is her Echo, Echo Soft and the Pearl Soho uh, Tussock in the Tea Rose colorway. It just added a little bit of... It gave it a tiny bit tiny of blush. Tiny bit of blush, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... So beautiful. And I, I love wearing it. It feels good on and... Wow, and it was, I thought it was a fun and fast knit. Mm -hmm. I've cast it on twice. Twice? Mm -hmm. Do you have it on, have it cast on now? Nope. <laughs> nope, but I've cast it on twice and haven't liked my yarn choice either time. Oh man, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Well, you gotta love your yarn choice because mm -hmm. this is an awesome sweater. It's, it's kind of a dressy sweatshirt <laughs> for me. I wear it around the house a lot or and then you can dress it up when you're going out. It's, Absolutely. It's got all kinds of possibilities. <laughs> so. Highly recommend it. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yes, yeah, I, do too. I do too. I have it on my needles. She does. So inspiring. <laughs> so, I don't know what else I can say. The yarn is holding up well. It does have a little bit of, it's got a lot of fluff to it. Yeah. So, I guess I'm not too surprised that it would have some... It's fluffing, fluffing. more than it's pilling. It's right. not really... Yeah. It's not pilling, really. It's just fluffing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's good, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's fine. <laughs> and, yeah. It's just an awesome sweater. Yeah. Totally love it. Okay. So, you want to go? Sure. My next one is the Wilfrida by Venki Ruald. And this is another one of those beautiful fast knits by, um, this is similar to the Ranunculus, only you have these these cute little cables up at the yoke and a little bit of pattern in there. Oh, it's cute. It's and really and cute. it's simple, but, but beautiful at the same time. So I use the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor and the Colorway Mesa for this one. And this, it's a DK weight. And, and really like this. I've worn it a few times. It does have a little bit of pilling, but not much, not a lot, but it does pull a little bit. I don't see it. Boy, yeah, that is it's so very, nice. very little bit if so that's far. that's DK, you could make that short sleeve. You sure could. And do that in a cotton yarn. That would be super Right. Cute. Make a cute summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gee, for sure. That's a great idea. So, yeah. So... Nice. Very happy with this. <laughs> I'm liking that then, idea. Yeah, I kind of like it This is the too. size 40. So, which is just perfect. Just perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so my next one is my second Bentley cardigan by Marie Green. And I knit this, I made the first one a couple of years ago, and Claudia and I both bought Zen Yarn Gardens, let me no. think, no, no, yeah, Dream and Color Colossal Sock from Zen Yarn Gardens, right? It was? I don't think so. No, 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 it's not. Simply Sock. Simply Sock. From right. Simply Sock, yes. And the colossal sock is this <laughs> huge, ginormous, yes. it's got, it's a skein and a half, I think, maybe. Yeah, right? 150, 150 grams, grams uh -huh. of sock yarn. And I had two of those. I still have a lot left. Didn't we each buy two? Yeah, nice. Yes. I haven't even ever used mine. <laughs> I haven't used mine either. So I, uh. it was hard because you can see that there's a lot going on. And it's kind of black and gold and rust and, you know, there's all kinds of little flecks. 
So I had another yarn and I did not even write down mm, in my notes what it was, but it was another sock yarn that I had and it's another super wash fingering weight that I used for the collar. Um, I'll call it a button band even though it doesn't button closed and the cuffs. And I, I just think this is such a cute sweater and it stays on really well. I don't know if it's because of the way the neck is so rounded, um, but it's got three quarter sleeves and I did this exactly to pattern. She has this little split in the cuff with a button. The last time I did it, I made a bobble in the same color yarn because I couldn't find buttons to match. But I really, I think it's just a super cute, easy to throw on sweater. And having said that, I have never worn it. So <laughs> <laughs> I made it and uh, something caught my eye and I moved on and I haven't it's just been hanging in my closet. As a matter of fact, I noticed someplace there is a pin. Oh. And I think I dropped a stitch, so I need to fix that. I don't, oh. there's, yeah, it's on the back side, and um, I'm pretty sure I've never worn it, but it's not because that was, a stitch was dropped. You can't see it from the front at all. I can just fix that on the back side, and nobody will be the wiser, except I just told several thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if you see me out and I'm wearing it, please don't say anything about my, <laughs> my drop stitch. <laughs> but I'll tell you what caught my eye. The next thing, and it is the Field Sweater by Camilla Vod. I talked on the last, like part one of this sweater that I'm wearing, the dream or the. Um, oh yeah, as a. Um, of being my epic. epic epic knit, it is no longer my epic knit. The field sweater is what I would consider the most epic knit. Some people didn't have problems with these grains. I had problems because I ended up very quickly making the needle in my left hand a size two, and I think I used a seven for it. But anyway, this is, I knit the 41.7 inch, which is the size three. Um, the top part of it is Lana Grossa Silk Hair in the marine colorway, and I held that together with Zen Yarn Gardens. That's why that was in my head. Um, There's Serenity 20 in the colorway Tiger's Eye. And it's just got a lot of blue and white <coughs> marling. And then uh, the body of the sweater is Rowan Felted Tweed and color number 177. It's gray with blue speckles and it's just like the perfect match. But boy, epic knit in the sense that it was just hard. Sometimes you're knitting like three or five grain stitches together at a time through the back loop I think or something and mm -hmm. right that's exactly what you do and yes. it's it makes for the most gorgeous sweater but I saw she came out with a hat like a little beret and some mitts and a vest and I am I have no interest <laughs> in doing <laughs> any of those I don't know why this was so hard on my hands Mm. But it was. It was well, probably yes. when you're trying to yeah. all those together it has yeah. to be challenging. So if you haven't done it yet and you're going to, I'm I highly recommend the pattern. I think it's really gorgeous and it I love wearing it. And I have worn it a lot, but you all know that Rowan Felted Tweed is like a workhorse yarn. Uh. It lasts forever and it just doesn't pill. It just looks as good as the day you knit it. Um, the top part is never going to pill with all that fluffy mohair. That Lana Grossa silk hair that I used on this, that's a really good mohair. I mean, it's just feel it seems softer oh, than it's most. Super soft. Yeah, it's softer than a lot of them. Yeah, I knit some beautiful. mohair that I put it on, and the first thing that happens is it starts pricking me. 
Mm. This huh. one, it just feels like, oh, I'm getting a <laughs> snuggly hug, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, love, love, love that. Now you did something where you lost track of where you were and you oh, had to rip back. Yeah. Just so they okay, kind of... So, right. So I was knitting along and somewhere, and in my, my notes on my Ravelry page, I tell you about row whatever do not lay it down. I want to say it was around 23 or 25. I, I could be wrong. But you move the beginning around marker on that row. And I must have done that, laid it down, picked it up, and tried to figure out where I was. And I was, you know, clear. I was just a few rows away from starting the color work right here where they hang down into the felted tweed part. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't have the right number of stitches between my markers and I could not figure out where I needed to add a stitch and it would show. It would absolutely show. I ended up ripping it back to the collar and starting over and when I got down to that part I was like, oh you idiot. I, ha I didn't need to rip back. I needed to read the pattern better and see that the section before it told you to move your marker or take your marker out and do something and slip it back. So you're moving it every section by a couple of stitches. Uh, mm. So anyway, I got to knit this part of the yoke twice. And the second, beautiful. the second time was much faster and easier than the first time. I mean, I think it's gorgeous. It and is beautiful. the person who figured out how to do the grains in color work over top of the rest of it good on them because I think that makes for a gorgeous sweater. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it'll be my only field sweater. I don't think I'm gonna knit that one again. So my next sweater is a field sweater by Camilla Vods. Same as Tammy. We worked on these pretty much around the same time frame. I've had all the same kind of problems as Tammy. And I had to rip back on mine too because mine, I, I made it so tight. So it was just a very, very tight and it, same deal. Like it hurt my hands and everything. But I was really happy with the, the colors that I chose because it looked like a field of grains and yep. of, of wheat, basically. And so I used the uh, Knit Pick City Tweed and Colorway Snowbank for the body. Mm -hmm. And then I used a combination of, I held together the Drops Out Packet and Colorway, I think it's 618, which was a brown color. And then the Barocco Ariel in the colorway copper and held those two together, which um, I thought looked nice for the grains. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's very, it was very uh, tight and everything. I really like the fit of the sweater all in all. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a beautiful sweater. I wear it. I've worn it quite a bit. Very proud of the fact that I got this thing done. <laughs> Very happy with it. And so um, I'm with Tammy. I, I can't say I want. I'm rushing to make another one. Yeah. But uh, it is a beautiful pattern, and I do recommend it. Cool. Yep. Okay. And I made the same size, which was a medium or like a 41.7, I think she said, Tammy said in hers. So, yeah. same size. Yeah. All right. So, my next one is the Home Cardigan by Kadri. And... I knit this in the 43 and a half. So I absolutely love the way this thing turned out. Mm -hmm. It's really warm. I did, um, I used the Garn Studio Drops, is that right? Drops Wish mm -hmm. in Tobacco, which is color number 11. And ooh, 
on the camera, there's a huge line on the sleeve that you cannot see with the human eye. Wow. That's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? So you yeah. guys are seeing something that we can't see here. It actually looks like there's a line across the chest too huh. that you don't see. Looking at it here. Um, this yarn spit splices. So if you are working with Wish and don't want to weave in these big bulky ends, I used my very sharp scissors and cut it halfway up for about two inches, cut the other one, the other end the same, got them plenty wet and rubbed them until it was hot and dry. <laughs> So it did take a little bit to do that and I did have to trim so it's blown into a I think it's a cotton tube uh -huh. So I did have to trim some of the cotton Off because that's sort of a the tube is almost like It's almost like an I cord That's just super fine mm -hmm. And so once all of that um, felts together I just trimmed off the edges and you would be hard pressed to ever find any of the ends. So the only ends I had to weave in were the ones that were absolutely necessary at the beginning and the end and then where you picked up sleeves. But I love the sweater and I, Claudia is the one who inspired me to make this because she had made one last year. Last year. <laughs> no, 22. 22 right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't think we've seen that one during all this. Mm -mm. But I love it. I can wear it with just a cami underneath or a denim shirt or anything. I mean, it's this is one of those really good, you can throw it on even with your PJs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's wearing really well. I don't have any problems with pilling. I think it's just going to turn into fluff. Yeah. If anything. And these buttons came in a... They're so cute. Yeah, they came in a box. They're wooden. And I got those on Amazon because I couldn't find... We really don't have a local yarn yeah. shop that would sell buttons, you know. They're putting in a new Michaels like 10 minutes from here. And mm -hmm. maybe when they're open, if they've got buttons, I'll be able to buy some there. Because um, I'd really like mm -hmm. to shop local rather than buy online. But... Um, you know, when you can't find what you're looking for local, you go to Amazon. I and I have now this whole box of all these really cute wooden buttons. And these were like the perfect match. So Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Mm -hmm. Can't recommend more highly the, with the pattern and the yarn. <coughs> all right. And this is my last one. Getting towards the end here, folks, so hang in there. Yeah, we're almost done. Because <laughs> we have some wine to drink next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, my last one was a Souk Moon by Asio Knits. And um, I used the Juniper Moon Farm Organic, uh, a Patagonia uh, Organic Merino, and the Anthracite Colorway, and also the um, Drops Kid Silk in the Colorway Blue Wind. And, ah, I love that sweater. Mm -hmm. It's easy, it's an easy knit. It's raglan, and so you just, I held those the two two um, yarns together, and then every I can't remember four, several rows. I would drop the main color the um, the wool the wool and just knit with the uh, mohair. Mine? So it gives you kind of that stripy feel, and it's this is a this is a good sweater too. It's a good great pattern. Um, the only thing I would say, because on the sleeve I had a little issue where I did too many rows of the two double strand, but I don't think you can really see it. Well, you zip around. You're just you know, zooming you around right. so fast on that compared to the body that yeah. you end up 
Yeah. You can't see it. It's, I know. Yeah, I, can't yeah, see I can it. see yeah. it. I can see one, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah who's going to notice that? Nobody's going to care. <laughs> Only right. another knitter is going to see that. Yeah. <laughs> and they may not even see it. So you have to look really right. close. Yeah. So, right. Anyway, yes, I would recommend this pattern. And um, yeah, I wear it a lot. I do have worn it a lot since I finished it. So that's when I finished it on the. December 7th. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I've seen you wear it a couple times, yeah. so that, it's yeah. just gorgeous. It is. It's, it's, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to buy that one. That's in my queue real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. okay. Who's... So my next one is the Solari by Hohi Locatelli. This is the fourth fourth sweater I've made of hers this yeah. year in 2023. And Tammy was the big inspiration um, for me to make this with her gorgeous Solari. So um, I love it. And yes, I do wear this all, you know, as many times as I can I can wear it. I wear yeah, it. This is really soft. Um, and this mm -hmm. is, I've held two yarns together on this. It's a uh, worsted weight. So I held the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the um, colorway Rainier and held that with the Drops Alpaca Lace in the colorway Sage Melange. And so that gives it a little bit of depth um, to the color that the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor had. And so it, it also made it softer. Yeah. yeah. It just... And allowed gave, you to get gauged. Yeah, yeah. allowed me to get I gauged and better. have a little yeah. bit of, just a little bit of fluff in it um, from the alpaca. And um, loved it. I made um, the size 4, which... Is in the 40, 40, 40 something. 40 ish. 40 ish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so I definitely, once again, recommend Hoagie's pattern. Yeah. Now, did you have, was there any issue with the sleeve? No. No. Okay. Not on this one. The sleeves okay. were, um, I think it's because perfect. it's her drop shoulder ones that oh, you have the trouble true. with. True. So the round is not it's a such a different a construction. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeve. So yeah, it, it worked out just beautiful. Very happy with Gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the next thing, and this is the last, and then we go to the wine tasting table. This is the Wildwood sweater by Heidi May. And this has been in my favorites since it came out. I love this sweater. And the way it was folded, I could actually see some pilling on it, but I don't see it looking down at it. So I don't, maybe it was just the way the light was hitting it or something. I also think that the light color at the top, it's, this yarn is very fluffy. So this is Westwool Tandem and the colorway glass and brackish. So brackish is the darker blue color and glass is the light color. But I, it has this fluffy halo and it's 100% wool, non-superwash. But I think that the lighter color fluff is getting a little bit into the darker color. Mm, doesn't really change it. No. Doesn't look like anyway. It's but beautiful. I love this. So I worked on this. This was my Rhinebeck knit. Uh huh. And this is the last thing that I actually finished this year, which is kind of odd because yeah. I started it in Rhinebeck. But you know, I 
there were a lot of um, Christmas knits once we got back. Oh, and right. You were doing gift knitting. Gift stuff. knitting, yeah. yeah. And so I worked on this for a good long time. But I knit the size 42, which is the size 9. So this starts in children's little bitty kid sizes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, all of these patterns, I think, that we have talked about are very size inclusive, and we should have said that in the very beginning. Yeah, that's true. I think the only mm -hmm. one maybe that's not is that drops pattern, that um, oh. sleeveless mm -hmm. one. And honestly, I just needed to find something. I was desperate to find a pattern to use that yarn, just to use it up. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I love it. Can't say enough good things about it. I don't think there were any issues. I think some of the people had row issues. Mine, I did not have a row issue because their armpits were like really low, like my drawing sweater, but it wasn't intended to be that way. This one just fits like right where it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, but if your row gauge isn't right, if it's too long, this pattern ends up low mm -hmm. and you don't separate until after it. Actually, maybe I even had to do a couple of rows extra after the yoke. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I did have a shorter row gauge. But I love this yarn. If you can get to Stephen and Penelope's or their online store to get some of this, I highly recommend it. It is really, really good and squishy. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. a very nice DK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was glad to be able to use it because that was from Amsterdam this year. Super nice. Yeah. yeah nice. Well, we have made some gorgeous stuff this year. <laughs> it's been <laughs> busy. <laughs> and we didn't include any of our accessories. So any socks or shawls or hats or mitts or scarves or anything like that. They, yeah. they didn't make the cut this time. Um, but you all have links now to our Ravelry pages because that's where we're linking to all this stuff. So you can see all the deets from... Uh, mm -hmm. From what we've showed so anyway we should get to the tasting table and taste that delicious bottle of wine yes, yes. so we'll see you over there <laughs> okay we're back <laughs> <laughs> today's wine is the justin justification from 2020 so it is a bordeaux blend one of their angle series and it is a beautiful wine um that is more bold, <laughs> more on the bold side. Shocker. <laughs> more on the tannic side, a dry on the dry side, and more acidic than soft. <laughs> and it has some lovely notes of oh. oak, vanilla, and tobacco. Yeah, I smell fruit. And fruit. so like much fruit. fruit: blackberry, yeah. black cherry, mm -hmm. cassis. Yeah. And ch cherries once again, red fruit and raspberry. So it's very, yes, very it's, fruity, mm -hmm. fruity on the nose. But it's not, it's so, not like it's in your face though. Fruit. It's it's a very nice, it's very layer. balanced. Yeah. yeah, right. It is. It's 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 very complex. Uh huh. But it's not. So it's tannic, but it's also tart. I don't get the yeah a lot of tannins, but I do get a little tartness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's people have said while, it, that it yeah, is a little true. tart, red cherry, raspberry jam, blackberries, and it's super silky mm -hmm. and very smooth on the tannins. Yummy. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. So what does that go so, for a bottle? It's a sixty-dollar bottle. Okay. Mm. 59 .50. Well, actually, it says here sixty nine fifty six. The average price, yeah. Six, average price. Yeah. So, I don't know, sixty nine sixty six. But it says you can buy it. Maybe that was by the case where it said you can buy it for fifty nine. Oh right, yeah. right. Oh, price per twelve bottle, bottle case. If you buy a twelve bottle case, yeah. Single. If you buy a twelve bottle case, a single bottle is eighty dollars. Oh, so that's why they're doing so, halfway for the average price. Yeah. Right, right. 
So it is a little more on the pricey side. Yeah, but man, is that uh, it's a uh, the wine, stuff. but very delicious. Yeah. So this would go well with a steak. It could hold up to something, some kind of proteins with some fat. Um, a barbecue. A barbecue, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. Like ribs. Mm. Dark oh, chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> dark chocolate. Yum. <laughs> Definitely dark chocolate. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So good. That is delicious. I bet even a hamburger would be good with this. I bet. Oh, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, we highly recommend the wine. <laughs> good golly. If you've hung in there yeah. this long, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Please yes. remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, leave us comments and let us know if you've got any thoughts about any of the sweaters we showed. Uh, if you'd like to see any other kinds of like maybe what we plan or what we hope to knit in 2024. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back with a regular episode next week. And that will be almost six weeks from our last episode because of vacations and holidays and all the things. Or is, is it, it next five week? Weeks? Is, is it next week? No, not week, week well. It, well, week well this yes. isn't showing oh, until right. next oh, week. Right. So by the time everybody sees this, it will be the yes. week after. Gotcha. So, gotcha. so we yeah. should have some beautiful nets. They may be completed. Yeah. <laughs> and or <laughs> on the needles. That you'll have, you'll to do. have something by then. You'll, oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear about progress on some things because we really haven't had time to chit chat about <laughs> things and we haven't even heard about Claudia's wonderful vacation because we got so into yeah, doing our, getting this uh, going yeah, and getting yeah. it done for you. So yeah. hopefully that two part thing worked out and it wasn't too awful long. Yeah. But, so. Yeah. We have. Yeah, let us know what you think about that. Did we overdo it? Um, do we give you enough details, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we gave about as good as anybody else is. We're a little late, but that's only because of our travel plans. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, you have to have some time off, and you got to yeah. go see the world. So. Right, exactly. Right. And it, it was a year where we all seemed to really love everything we made. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Just, everything yeah. was just beautiful. And so. we loved everything each other made. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were inspired. We by were each inspired other. for sure. Yeah. And continue to be. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, and you inspire us, folks. So yes. Thank you. Keep those comments coming because we absolutely. If you're having a down day and you read a comment from a beautiful viewer who's been following for a while and, you know, it just makes our day. It just lifts you up. It, mm -hmm. it lets us know that the reason we're doing this is really there, you know, it's to make... It's about you people. It's about the community. Mm -hmm. It's about reaching out and mm -hmm. touching other knitters' lives and mm -hmm. you touching ours and all the things. So, cheers to you. Yes. Cheers. Until next time. Yeah. Right? yeah. And remember, if you can't be with the wine you love, love the wine you're with. Cheers. <laughs>